My name's Frank McElhenney and I'm an artist from Glasgow and I'm over here in Donegal for a month on a, a residency with Artlink. I suppose I'm an atypical artist in a way uh, in that I've started so late. I uh, never thought about making art uh, until I was in my early 40s. Um, I was always someone who went and looked at art and was really interested in that always, but uh, I had a career in industry and worked in manufacturing logistics most of my life, but went to art school when I was 46 and graduated in 2014. Uh, the course I studied was fine art photography at the Glasgow School of Art. I guess I, I, I'm what you would call a midlife crisis artist, right? So a lot of people when they get into their early 40s, they start asking themselves the big questions about life. Uh, you know, and maybe go away and buy a new car or something, uh, or other things. But I decided to really look at, well, am I really gonna do the kind of work that I do uh, in industry for the rest of my life? Is this really what fulfills me? And I took some time away from work. I actually went on a, a trip where I, I travelled for a month and uh, thought about doing something creative that involved writing, in fact. But what happened was that I took a camera with me and everywhere I went, I was making pictures the whole time. So by the end of that journey, I realised that what I really wanted to do was to make visual art. And so that, through a process of uh, questioning and thinking about how to take things forward uh, led me to decide that I wanted to go to art school and uh, just try and start a fresh chapter in life. And I actually applied for different courses at the Glasgow School of Art and got accepted uh, but chose photography. In, in terms of my practice and the, the things that I look at um, and I'm interested in, I would say that for the last five years in a way, one of the things that's been right at the forefront is migration as a theme. So back in 2015, shortly after I graduated from art school, the news was full of coverage of people trying to come across the, uh, the Mediterranean Sea and obviously a lot of people making that journey then going through Europe uh, and settling in difficult circumstances in countries like Germany and Sweden and so on. Um, but a lot of tragedy along the way. Um, you know, people were forced to leave quickly because of war and economic hardship. And it was a real tragedy that uh, was unraveling in front of our eyes on the television every night. And that kind of affected me and I wanted to make work that responded to that, but I didn't want to be, and maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just an age thing, I didn't want to be charging off to the scene of the action, as it were, and, and, and uh, making work directly about what was happening in those events. And I thought about, well, what's a different way of tackling it? And that's when I began to think about, well, if you look back only a few generations um, in these countries where people are trying to get to, then the in, you know the indigenous people of those countries themselves probably experienced similar things not so long ago. Um, and in particular, the first thing that I looked at was the clearances that had happened in Scotland um, in the you know throughout the 19th century really. Uh, there was a lot of migration out of Scotland and often in circumstances where that was forced and people really didn't have much choice but to leave in particular the Highlands and the Islands. And that got me off photographing abandoned settlements and, and I travelled all over the Highlands and Islands working with a kite and a drone uh, and making these images, aerial images, of what was left of these abandoned settlements. But as time went on, I thought about, and I guess was in a way forced to think about the fact that actually, how did I get to be here in Scotland myself? 
because in a way I'm not Scottish, I'm an Irish Scot. All my family uh, on both sides have come from Ireland and the names of my four grandparents are all Irish. Um, and that, you know, that, that kind of logically led me to be where I am right now, which is in Donegal, where the McElhenneys came from uh, in the 1870s when they moved to Scotland. Um, looking at things in a more personal way. Now, I don't know if that will flow through directly into the work, but certainly taking that approach of going physically to the places where my own family lived and farmed uh, in the 19th century, it's bound to inform the work. Um, and it's really quite moving in a way to, to go through that process of retracing the steps back to the source, as it were. Um, but, you know, when I make work, I'm not trying to second guess what, that out, what the outcomes will be, but I suppose in a, a general sense, one of my aims would be to have people today um, take a more considered response to migration that's happening right now, because of what I said earlier about we're all only a few generations away from circumstances that were similar for our own, our own families, our own people. I think it's true to say that humans have always been on the move. You know, how do we get anywhere? You know, the, the, the last ice age uh, was whatever it was, 12,000 years ago. Ireland and the rest of the UK would have been covered, or sorry, not the rest of the UK, <laughs> that other place called the UK. Um, was covered in a sheet of ice, there were no people here. We've all come and travelled um, by land and sea to get here after the, the end of the last ice age. Um, I think what's different though is that in the last couple of hundred years, you know, because of the dynamics of capitalism and imperialism, the volume and, uh, you know, the enormity of population shifts is something that the world's not seen before, really, because change before that would have been slow and gradual, but with technology and uh, you know the economic developments, change is rapid and cataclysmic when it happens. So, um, what happened in Ireland in the middle of the 19th century saw a couple of million people either move or leave uh, or, or die. Um, and you know, the two world wars had a similar effect. Um, and now, today, we have to think about climate change and what that's going to do. Um, so it's really important, as far as I'm concerned, to remind people of how migration is a human problem and not something that just affects others or the others in parts of the world that are distant from us, yeah, um, it's part of human history and it's a human problem that we share and, and ought to try and work together to try and alleviate as much as possible. When I first graduated from art school in 2014, I think I almost had this feeling inside that I had to race to catch up because I had started so late. And I've made new work every year for the last five years, I've exhibited every year for the last five years as new bodies of work. And I almost feel as though I have to stop doing that and, and slow down. Um, I think that I can see now looking back that some of the projects that I've done all relate to the same themes and that somehow now there's a need to pull it together and to not rush, to take my time. Um, there'll be more depth to the outcomes if I do that. So I think that's definitely an observation about, you know, starting late, you, you do feel the need to, to run fast, um, but you learn the hard way that that doesn't give you the best outcome in terms of the work. Yeah, my, my approach to making work, um, I could talk about it in two levels, I suppose, you know, on a, a simple generic level, the way I think about art, um, you know, I'm looking at it from the point of view of a maker, and so when I think about, well, what is art? I think about it as a process um, that we go through as artists to 
generate new new work and it starts with investigation and asking questions um, things that may trouble us or confuse us or we're just curious about um, and we investigate and make discoveries through time um, but as an artist part of that process involves creation and creation and making things is it has a feedback loop uh, you know it, it helps you to answer questions it helps you to make new discoveries um, the, the act of making uh, the physical act of doing these things uh, making a photograph making a drawing um, it moves forward your understanding um, and it's a process of, of uh, building knowledge and finally the, 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 the communication aspect I don't think that any work is fully resolved until it's been shared with other people and you get you know, a feedback loop from that as well so that's kind of like my general overview of, of, of art in four words yeah investigation discovery creation and communication but then if I take that to a more personal level and how I go about things um, I often start with some kind of loose conceptual framework to projects I'm working on and central to that is a really simple thing is I almost always have a map okay uh, uh, I call them fonty maps because by the end of my project they're fonty bits um, I so when I'm coming here to Donegal uh, got a map of Donegal and you know get my highlighter pen out and I just mark off things that um, might look interesting for general reasons or things that specifically are connected to questions that I've been asking um, and they, then I go about this thing that I would call purposeful wandering where I you know I do get in the car and I do drive and I just try and get around as much as possible and speak to people and see a lot of things and, and make a lot of photographs as I go and I Purposefully, don't try and start with any preconceived notions of um, what I'm going to make or any of the answers to the questions I've got. I'm, I'm, I'm just gathering in, casting a wide net and gathering in and gathering in. And then um, from that, I can be quite opportunist, opportunistic uh, during that. Uh, that traveling and, and, and making the initial uh, collection of, of work. Um, if, if an opportunity presents itself, I'll follow it, you know. Um, things happen, so while I've been here, um, you know, like I, I found out there was this uh, maritime history seminar day and I went down there and listened to a talk that a guy was giving about uh, migration and learn some new things uh, that, that might inform some of the works that I would make um, and simple things happen like you know coming here I noticed that there were these bird sanctuaries um, that were very close to the place where my family originally came from and I just went there and realized that you know you know, these birds, these swans and geese from Iceland, in a way, could act as a metaphor um, for the migration theme that I was exploring. And so I keep, became quite obsessed, in a way, with photographing at dusk and dawn, the birds uh, leaving the lake in the morning to go off and feed in the fields and then coming back in at night when the sun went down. Um, so there were a lot of... Uh, badly exposed photographs of uh, swans, whooper swans, uh, hooper swans and geese um, that I'll have to think about how I can use uh, in the final work. Um, so, so there's that. Um, and then the thing, the last thing I'd say about my own approach to making would be that, and this is alludes to what I, I mentioned earlier and some of what I've learned in the last five years about the right way or the best way to make is I think there's a great, there's a, a slow fil filtration process at the end of all this. It's a once you've gathered in all this material, um, I think you have to allow for a, a slow filter on it all, um, you know, or harvest of the 
this knowledge that you've you've garnered um, so that the works that drop out the bottom somehow synthesize all these disparate elements into something that's coherent and can be shared with others in a, in a way that's not opaque because it's just all buzzing around in my head. It's, it's got to be things that uh, have a finished form that make sense to others, other people. There's different things, you know, I think that the, the moment of discovery, when you realise the penny drops, that this could be significant. So what I talked about there with the swans and the geese, it sounds daft really, really, when you think about it. Uh, but then, you know, you stand in the dark and you see these beautiful birds flying over your head really close and they've got a seven foot wingspan and there's like 12 of them and they're all making a really loud noise not just through their, their flapping of, of their wings but the, the call that they make and and you, you kind of it affects you physically and emotionally and then you think yeah and that can become part of the work because actually these birds come here every year they migrate and I'm making this work about the movement of people and that movement is not a final one-off movement, it's actually an ebb and flow. You know, you and I are sitting here and we've both got Scottish accents because we're in Donegal, um, because connections remain in place and people come and go, and they have done for centuries. Um, um, so those penny drop moments where you make those little discoveries where you can connect something uh, to the work that you, you, you want to make and what you want to the metaphors that might help you explain and share things, um, th those, are, those are key moments and, and things that I enjoy. But other things too, like, uh, I mean, I'm a bit of a stoic, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're born to do certain things. Those geese wake up in the morning and they know they need to fly to the field, and they, they need to leave the lake to go and feed in the field. and. I enjoy the fact that I've kind of found a purpose in life to make art and when I wake up in the morning, just the act of going and knowing that I've got a day ahead of me where I can go to work and, 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 and go through that process and collect the, the, the visual information that will allow me then to progress that into a tangible output at the end of it. Um, that, that daily pre that daily process, I enjoy it. You know, I like it. It's like going to work in a, in a meaningful way. So coming here and actually physically going to those places where my family had been and farmed, um, it kind of lets you identify in a really close way to you know the, the forces that drove that migration of people from Ireland and specifically Donegal to Scotland and, and you know in particular Glasgow and the west of Scotland and it, and it reinforces some of the thought process, processes behind the project that I'm doing right now which is to think not just about well these diasporas from Scotland and Ireland but how they connect to what's happening in the world right now and the kind of experiences that people are having from countries that are under a lot of pressure uh, in the Middle East or Africa or wherever that, that might be. Um, it makes me feel it personally and hopefully that helps me to make better work, <laughs> if you like, to, uh, to share that with other people and start a discussion about what's happening in the world right now and, and I believe will become increasingly uh, an issue for the world, migration. Like a lot of artists, I do a day job. Um, and if I'm working a contract doing a day job, it's hard to get the headspace to actually really focus on a project. And by going on a residency and changing your uh, geographical location, um, you, you kind of break the cord to, to, to the day job, but also, um, in my case, um, you know, the wife and the kids are such a big part of my life that um, if I'm not 
you know, constantly dealing with those guys. Um, for a limited period of time, it's, it's quite nice uh, to just be able to focus on the work uh, and the project that, that's in mind. Um, clearly, in the case of this residency and a few others, um, they have the places that I tend to fo try and get uh, placed would be things that have a direct connection to the projects that I'm working on. So that process I spoke about earlier about how I make purposeful wandering, driving around, making lots of images, maybe discovering connections that I hadn't even anticipated. I want to be doing that in a place that is connected to the work and the project. I think that, you know, I've discovered things along the way and that's been important and useful. Um, but I, the other thing it says, I didn't really have a set notion before I arrived of what I would do. I just had a kind of general approach to it to just fall into it and work hard. <laughs> well, I think that it's been very beneficial, the residency uh, for my practice. Um, the, some of the things we've spoken about already, which is discoveries, personal discoveries about my family history that feeds in directly to the project that I've been working on, which is all about migration. Um, some of it though is just generally meeting people who are involved in the art scene and I think that that's kind of uh, potentially could pay dividends in the future because there's a lot of cultural exchange between Donegal and the kind of west of Scotland. Um, so I'd like to keep up some of those connections, you know, and meeting some of the other artists like Barry Sutherland, for example, who's originally from Glasgow. I think it, it's good to, to build up that network of contacts. Well, working with ArtLink has been both enjoyable and interesting, right? Um, because I'm used, being based in Glasgow, of course, it's a city that's known for, I guess, uh, you know, its art institutions and its cultural scene and all the rest of it. And I think coming to work with ArtLink Things are very spontaneous, is maybe a way that I would describe it. It's been eye-opening how, with so, such little resources, you can get so much done. And I think that's commendable as well. But it's been a pleasure working with everybody as well. I mean, everybody's been very friendly and helpful, um, above and beyond the call, to be honest with you. Uh, one of the things that was really enjoyable um, during the time of the residency was doing the workshop, because we actually had, I don't know, a dozen people in the room uh, all working together uh, in a practical way, making pinhole cameras. And, but it was great because of the conversation. And we talked about art, and we talked about local uh, history. And uh, that aspect of, you know, not just meeting people running galleries, curators, whatever, but actually meeting the people that live here and, and you know, finding out about their lives. You learn a lot, you know, as an artist from that. You know, the, the real people, you know, the, getting a taste of reality, I think, is uh, really important in these residencies. So that was good.